Hi guys, welcome back to the next video. Um, I know you guys can't see my desk, but I have books stacked on top of books right in front of me. And I had to go back through and dig through all of my journals that have all of the written messages that the Lord has given me over these several years. Because today, April the 4th, is a very pivotal day, I believe, um, in uh, in in God's timing. And I know that there has been several years um, that I have I have remained strong that the Passover season is a big season and and it is a it is a high watch season and that spring itself and the feast and the days and what they mean on the Jewish calendar for spring itself is extremely high watch. Now, I received a message from the Lord today. And he, I've received, they are so active. Are you seeing them? I am seeing them and getting chill bumps on my end. So, okay. So, um, so I, I received a message from the Lord today. And I, I shared this, this message um, on Facebook. As a matter of fact, I've been sharing all of these messages for the most part, the ones that are, are public to be shared, have been shared on Facebook. Um, I share on two pages on Facebook. I share on my personal page and then another page that is created as a group page that, um, that contains all of the messages that I have received or the majority of them, okay? And even some teachings and dreams and visions and that thing, uh, that type of thing on another particular page um, on Facebook. And there's nothing on there really except all of these um, messages and dreams and visions all in dated order. Um, and so they're all there for you to go back and dig into if you'd like to be able to do that. Now, I know there's there are some of you all that are not on Facebook. However, that's the only backup that I have um, for some of these messages other than my own electronic copies and, of course, written format. These are the messages that the Lord has given me. These are the things where I have sat at his feet and listened to what he wanted to say what he wanted to teach me personally, what he wanted to teach us, what he wanted me to share, what he wanted to convey to his children, what whatever he wanted and desired um, to, to give us, whether it was revel, revel, revelatory knowledge, wisdom, guidance, direction, um, sometimes correction, you know, it, it, whatever he wanted to give me or us are all contained in, in these books. Now, many of you know that I am packing to move. My house has finally got put onto the market, um, and we're, we're all pretty excited about that. I'm going to ask that you pray. Keep me in prayer, please, um, that, um, that the Lord... Um, has a buyer for me. He's already told me he's got a buyer for me, and I, I'm standing on that um, wholeheartedly that he has a buyer for this house. Um, I just pray that it comes in speedily, um, but in his timing. And um, and I, I believe the Lord is going to give us a little bit of a breather before <laughs> before we have anything else happen. So what I've been doing is I had to go back into some of the stuff that I had packed up because I needed to pull out some of these other messages that I want to talk to you all about today. So without further ado, let's talk about this particular date in history because this has been a very particular, a very important date, either a day before or a day after or right in this span of about three to four days with specifically April 4th being a very significant day in terms of messages that the Lord has provided. And so um, and so let's take a look at the message that um, um, I received today 2017. So this is April 4th 2017 and it says daughter among the things that I desire for you to know this day my child 
it is this, that you are one of many that shall be called forth this very day to proclaim the goodness and mercy of the Most High Living God. His name is above all names, and his throne above all thrones. There are those who desire to place their abode above the highest in the kingdom. But I say, this, my children, it shall not be, it cannot be. My loves, listen to the words that I am saying unto you this day. You are my children, my love, those that I adore. Now, I have to stop and tell you here because in my mind, I'm hearing the words, the word adores. That's the word he's been telling. He has told me that word probably three or four other times. And I've not, I've not put the word in um, or I've not shared that particular word. I've said those that he adores. Um, because I'm like, Lord, what does that mean? What, you know, what is that? What does that mean? And why, you know, what, what word is that? Because I, I stopped and looked for it. I've, I looked online for it. I tried to define it. Was it a name? What could I find? I finally tripped across something recently. But the first time that he told me that, I had, I couldn't find anything on it. And he, he, this is how he said it. He said, adores. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to spell it out because I don't, I've never even heard the name before. Um, but he has said it to me a couple of times. And so it's adores. And, um, and, uh, and so what I have found most recently was this. Um, I found something that the question was, what does adore mean? And adore means um, it's a name for girls um, and it means a gift beloved, adored, associated with gift. And so when he says um, adores, he's saying my beloved. I knew it was a term of endearment. I, I could sense that. I knew it was a term of endearment, but I didn't know what it meant. And so he had said it to me a couple of times before because, you know, he'll say my loves, he'll say my doves, and he's meaning that as, as a term of endearment. Um, and he also says adores, but I didn't know, I had no idea what it was. Um, so anyway, okay, so let's come back. My children, my loves, my adores, my beloved, okay? Watch and see what shall come to be before your very eyes in the days to come, my children. You shall be amazed and stand in awe over the great majesty that shall be bestowed unto you. You shall see great and mighty things and know my hand is upon your lives over and above you at all times. My children, look and see what is before you, for it is I, the great I am, and I shall make myself known unto all in the land. You shall see this. I shall make myself known to all in the land. It shall be, my doves. It shall be. Watch for my hand and listen for my call, for there shall be a great trumpet blast across the nations. Those who hear and abide in me will do well in the coming days. Hold fast, my loves, for times are near for truths to be made known, love to be understood, and wisdom to be granted and brought forth. Your ways in me and my ways across the world shall be seen in and through you, my loves. Watch for what I say is true. You shall see me in my greatest form. And that was the end of the message. You will see me in my greatest form. Now that got my mind going because I'm like, you know, well, on Mount Sinai, they saw fire and smoke. We know, we've talked about 
what they uh, what the Israelites would have experienced when God's presence came down onto that mountain. And we we talked about, you know, what what we could expect, um, the earthquake and the and and the fire and the smoke and the and the cloud and the, you know, the just we already talked about everything that could possibly encompass um, his his presence. And so this is saying here that you shall see me in my greatest form. And, you know, I, I was doing some I was doing some um um, some study and and um, listening to something about revelation, and we know that there was that rainbow that was around uh, around the throne in heaven, and we know that um, that light comes out not just as white, but it actually comes out in in seven seven different colors. I mean, it's it's colors that compass encompass white, and um, and so when we when we you know, they had the emerald rainbow or the rainbow around the throne, you know. And so are we going to be seeing a great majesty such as that? You know, I, I don't know, because this is saying um, great majesty that shall be bestowed unto you. I, I, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, but this is the one that I received today. This is the message that I received today on April the 4th. And when I looked at the date, I said, that date, I remember that date. Because way back in 2014, and I pulled the book just to make sure that I knew what I was saying to you. Um, I, it was not a message that I received. It was what I heard upon waking um, on, on April the 4th, 2014, this is what I noted in my journal, I awoke to this, hearing these words, I now pronounce you husband and wife. I kid you not. Those are the words that I heard. I now pronounce you husband and wife. And I knew I wasn't dreaming about it. I There was no dream that I had recalled when I woke up. When I woke up, I was just hearing. I was, he it was like I was, I was hearing what was going on. I kid you not. And so April the 4th, 2014, that's what I heard. Same day, just back several years ago. Okay, so let me pull that out of the way and then get into... April the 4th, let's see, that was 2017, that was 2014, I can go to 2015, and then I'll get into 2016. So 2014, April the 4th, this was the message. My children hear me now, I have taken great lengths to come forward at this time. Hear me now. Listen closely to what I say. Never let your guard down, not even for a second. From this point forward, the enemy has a ploy, a scheme to torture my children. He will try to draw you out of your hidden chamber to show yourselves. Stay put beneath my wings and do not make a move. My child, I know you hesitate to share this message as it may incite fear. In me, there is no fear and my children will be protected. My children know and hear my voice and another they will not follow. Place this before them and I will guide them from there. And that was the end of the message. So now, when I had opened up the book for um, April for 2015, April 4th message, and that's when I came across, right next to it was my April 2nd message. And this, I have to read. Now, I was talking to the Lord, and I... When when I know I'm getting ready, and 
let me let me just back this up. I was talking to the Lord and having great difficulty with um, with an attack coming against me in order to hear the message. Now, several years ago, when I was getting ready to receive something pretty substantial from the Lord, something new I didn't know about, the enemy did not want me to know about because he knew I was going to share it, um, then I would be attacked and it would be very, very difficult for me to even hear. I would have to stop. I would have to do warfare. I would have to rebuke the whole nine yards. And, um, and, and I was struggling to try to hear the Lord this day. Now in 2017, that those attacks are like almost every day, every day. If I, if I sit down to talk to the Lord, even just to ask him a simple question now, it is, it is, um, it is plagued with static and um, uh, interruptions and issues of something blocking what all is going on um, with my hearing and, and, and things I'm struggling to, to hear. I'm having to press into him even more to, um, to be able to hear what he is trying to tell me so that I can put um, his messages out to you or or even if it's just a personal message to me or my family and so um, and so it's 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 for the last several years it has be it has become progressively harder to hear him progressively harder because um, because you know you can hear yourself and then try and uh, and try to um, guess what he might be saying. But that's that's not what I that's not what I need to do. What I'm listening for are his words and so that I can bring his exact words to you, not what I think he might be saying, but what he is saying exactly. And so um, and so so. I've had to take measures here on my end and, and being obedient with a couple of things that he has asked me to do, but I'm, I'm beginning to slowly understand what that's all about. Um, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit, because um, that is something else that I'd like to bring up. Um, maybe the Lord has been asking you all to do the same. I don't know, um, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay, so, but at this time, I truly had to stop in my prayer with the Lord and just firmly, you know, sternly and and loudly rebuke this enemy away um, in the name of Jesus, of course, and through his authority, they needed to get away from me and quit bothering me because I was having a very difficult time hearing. And um, and so um, I, I, I rebuked and um, went in back into prayer um, with the Lord. And, you know, he... He's, he's so funny sometimes. He can be so silly. Um, but I I had to go into attack mode, basically, and I had to rebuke loudly and sternly. And then when I and then when I got quiet to go back to the Lord, he said, he said, um, daughter, you scared me. I, I just had to, you know, he just said it in a joking way because he knew, you know, I was, I was trying to put on my big girl boots. You know, I was trying to get out there. I was, I was putting into action what I had been learning and, you know, and he's, he was playing around and I basically laughed, but I told him that wasn't funny. Um, you know, I, <laughs> so, but anyway, um, he, this is what he said that day in the message. And now this is an April 2nd message. Um, this is right next to the, the message of, of April, uh, April 4th. And he says, daughter, he said, can I do all that I say? And I said, yes, you can, Father. You can do everything you say and even things you don't say. You can do all things. And he said, then listen to my words. He said, you are forgiven. You are loved. You are worthy and well capable of handling things to come. Keep me near, my dear, my dear one, for I will guide you through all things, ensuring your safety. You will know exactly what to do, for you have been trained, taught by me, my angels. They are here for you and surround you at all times, keeping watch and waiting, just as you and me. We are all waiting and ready for the clock to strike 12 midnight in great anticipation. 
you will see great and mighty things, some scary, although you do not have to watch. Um, this was something that I, I must have prayed the night before because I made a notation that I had just prayed on that the night before. He said, yes, my love, I understand more, more than you know. The changes that are taking place are done by my hand and must be completed. How else can it be? I have tried all things to gain the attention of others. I will not let them go. I will see to it that they return. It is their choice in suffering, but I will not let them go. And all I could say was just thank you, Father, because I had been... I had been in very, very deep prayer about my family. He continued. He said, my dear one, you will be a part of all that will be occurring at that time. You will see great destruction, but it shall not come nigh thee. I will not allow it. Gather all you can into your home and ensure their safety. It is anointed, protected, and shall not be harmed. Those within will know and understand that I have covered it with my hand. You shall go forth with great boldness, power, and strength, for I will be within you, enlightening your being. You will know it as I speaking through you and showing you the way. So right at that time, I had a, a vision come, come to me. I saw hundreds, if not thousands, of people just right in front of me. Like, I just saw them. They were just there. But every single one of them looked like Jesus. Every single one of them looked like Jesus. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of Jesuses standing right in front of me. And I said this to him. I said, you know what, Father? I said, the enemy did not want to deal with you just being one person. Now look how many people you are going to be. See, he's coming to and fill us. The world isn't going to see us. They're going to see Jesus. So the vision he gave me of a hundred or a thousand people, and when I looked at them, I saw Jesus. I saw hundreds of thousands of Jesus. That's us being filled by him. Because it's his words and his love and his strength that's going to go out. That's what people are going to see, not us. We're not going to have anything to do with it. If we are obedient and follow the Lord and follow the Spirit, if we're walking, learning how to walk in the Spirit now so that we can follow and walk in the Spirit then, even when we're infilled, we, we're just listening to the Spirit. It's going to tell us what to say. It's going to tell us where to go. It's going to tell us who to go to. I mean, we've had recent messages right here lately that are telling us it, you're going to a specific person. I'm going to send you to a specific person. And it has to be done at that time because the Lord's he's, he's dealing with their heart. And when he sends us to that particular person, it's going to be the prime moment, the divine moment set up for us to enter in and talk to them. I mean, it's it's all going to be laid out. All we got to do is walk it. That's all we got to do. But we got to learn how to walk in the spirit, follow what that inner voice is telling us. You know, guys, there are times that you, you wake up in the middle of the night. 
you know. I know you guys are doing, I know you hear this too. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and your spirit is singing. It's singing a song. It's not in your head. It's in your heart. It's in your spirit. And you hear it, you know. Or you wake up and 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 you hear words of I now pronounce you husband and wife. It's in the spirit. You're hearing what's going on in the spirit because that's that's what you're that's what has been that's what was opened up to you. And so when we're awake and we allow our spirit man to get stronger and bigger within us and we can hear him. You know, sometimes I can be praying and the spirit will give me words that I need to say in my prayer. And I know that's what it is. And so I'll say those words in my prayer. Now, he doesn't control my whole prayer, but a lot of times he gives me the words that need to be said that I, I wasn't thinking about. And I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm talking about hearing your spirit man speak through you. That's what I'm talking about. And so you got to give your spirit man room. You got to give him room to grow and get stronger and get louder so that you can hear him because that's what's going to be, that's what's going to get, that's what he's going to infill and that's what's going to get even bigger and brighter. Um, so I saw hundreds of thousands of Jesuses and I just had to laugh. You know, I said, because it's going to be you within all of us. And now the enemy is going to have to deal with how many of you? I mean, they, he didn't even want to deal with one of you. So now he's going to deal with how many? I Don't tell me the Lord's plan is just not perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. I mean, and this was, this was back in 2015. So this was, you know, I was just learning about the infilling. I was just learning, you know, pretty much what he was trying to say about that and how that was all going to come to be. And so, um, and so it was, you know, it, guys, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. And so, okay, so 2016, uh, let me see if I had... Yes, I had a message uh, April the April the fourth, and this is what it said. But I also had a dream on the second, and we want to talk about that one too. Okay, April the fourth, twenty sixteen. Daughter, wonderful things are about to happen. Big, expansive things, things that you know not of. Things that are bright and beautiful and put forth by my hand. You are my love, my joy, my wonderment, my star upon the earth. You will shine, my child, like the firmament in the heavens, never going out, forever bright for all to see. You are my love, my shell, my vessel, marching forward on the earth to reach out to those who are heavy laden, burdened under heaviness of sickness, sin, and disease. Healings shall be offered and shown to many, for it can be done. It shall be done. There shall be none of my children upon the earth lacking in any good thing. No thing will go unnoticed. Healings shall occur. Brightness will be shown. Power among many. Solidarity in unit. Unity in mass. My will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is none lacking in heaven, my loves. None without me. None desiring more. They are satisfied to the full of my love and overflowing for many around them to drink of the calm and peaceful waters being provided. My children, can't you see? Can't you see that it is I about to come upon your earth to dwell there, to live among my people, to bring my home to you, to settle all matters, to rebuke and cast out all evil affairs. That is what is about to occur. 
I am taking back my earth, my creation, my people, no longer to be under the veil of evil, lies, and deceit. You shall see this, my loves, with your own eyes, and know that I am speaking forth truth this day. Watch and see for what I do for my children upon the earth. I will leave no stone unturned and search for them. I will gather them unto myself, and there they shall stay protected from the evil one. My arms around them, embracing them, covering them, ensuring their safety within my pinions. Do you understand this, my loves? There is nothing more than me. This is nothing more than me coming back to take what is mine. Shall it be turbulent? Yes, my loves. Shall there be calamity? Deaths? Yes. But I say this to you this day. Stand strong within me, for I am your strong tower, and watch and see what I shall do. For my hand is upon the earth to reclaim what is mine. Shrink back, Satan, for you have no power here any longer. Your day is doomed. The time is set. Prepare yourself, for it shall be done. And that was the end of the message. Now, guys, can you see why in some of these messages that I have always felt so strongly about the time of Passover, the time of spring, this particular season, it has just been year after year after year after year. And if I go back on the same days, if I go back on March 30th and read all four years worth, you know, or April 1st and read all four years worth, I there's a common theme. There's a theme that, how is that possible? That isn't anything that I've done. He's coming back. He's saying he loves us. This is the time for us to be going home. Guys, I'm telling you, this is, I, I still stand strong. I still stand strong in regards to this being a very high watch time for me personally. For me personally. So, um, I want to read something to you on April the 2nd, 2016. This was a dream the Lord gave me. Um, I made a note last night. Now this is 2016. Last night I had several dreams. Well, two were dreams and one I think was a conversation. Let me explain. The first thing I remember from last night is hearing these words. You are chosen. You are first fruits. I was awakened and immediately recalled what was just said. The Lord gave me a message on the 31st of March and looking into the Omer for things that were about to unfold. I have been in studies and last night I was in Leviticus 23. There it speaks of several feasts. I knew, I had, I knew this had something to do with that. So later that night I had a dream. This one had people in it that I know in real life. And in the dream, I was at a work function of some sort. In my real job, I have two bosses, um, my immediate boss and his boss. In my dream, I looked at my immediate boss and he came over to me and he said, you are going to be announced within an hour for a new job. He and I both uh, walked together. He was on my right side, speaking low in my ears if he was giving me information I was not to have just yet. Um, I asked what the job was, and he said it was something about gems, like uh, like stones and diamonds. Now, mind you, I don't I don't work in this industry. I'm I am a um, I am a um, I'm a state government 
um, uh, serving. I work, I work with, with public health. And so, um, <laughs> so gemstones is not my, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not my, my deal. And so, so now this was interesting because I don't work in that industry at all. And I was told the job was in Georgia. Um, so I felt a bit nervous about this because I live in North Carolina and would be taking this job, which means I would be away from my family a lot. Um, and so I, uh, I knew my husband, I knew my husband would not be real happy about it, which is strange because he's always supportive of any endeavor that I do. And I knew that I did not have to accept the job, but it was highly recommended that I did kind of feeling. And so then I was in this van being driven by my husband and I told him about the job and he questioned about it. And while I was looking at the clock on the dash, I knew that I had to return to where I was before the announcement and I only had 30 minutes left. And so, um, and so in the dream, he, he turned me around and was taking me back. And so, um, and so guys, um, this is talking about being chosen. This is talking about first fruits. We've been talking about that right now. We, we've, we've been given messages right here lately that, you know, we feel like the first fruits are getting ready to be called. They're getting ready to be called into service. You know, this is the timing of it all. This is what we have going on. And, you know, the Lord has been given hints all throughout the years, all in this time frame. You know, you, you, did, you can't, there's, there's no way I, there's no way I could have put these things in the order, in the progression that they have year after year after year after year. This is, this is the handiwork of our most high God. And he is every, every 2014 in April, 2015 in April, 2016 in April, this year in April, it's the same messages guys it's the same messages and it's like he's been given the information every single year no matter no matter where we are in the year then you know the messages are dealing with a certain thing it's the same all throughout all of the different years it's it's mind-boggling how he does these things go back and check your journals guys you will be flabbergasted that's all i can say so guys, you know, gemstones, what, you know, gem, gemstones, that's, a, that's God's people, gemstones, the priests, the ephod, you know, I'm, I just, I'm looking at all of this and I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, and then so, and then I had another dream that night and um, this was that I was in a room, a small bedroom of sorts with a desk, a bed and a closet and I was standing in between the bed and the desk and I had put a small braided cord that was gold and purple on the desk. I was speaking to someone I know from work again, his name is Aaron, who was folding up some things. I turned to gather what was on the bed uh, to place on the desk. This time, it was a long purple and gold cord, like one you would receive at a graduation if you were a top student, like the honor, the honor sash, the honor cord. And it was purple and gold. So we know purple is royalty. In the dream, I immediately thought about ECU or East Carolina University here in North Carolina. Uh, because of the colors, the purple and gold. It was if I had just returned from the graduation. I helped pick up some things that dropped on the floor from someone that was putting them away in the closet. And these were, uh, let's see, I apologize about the closet being too small, da 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 da. Okay, so. Um, Aaron, the name Aaron was there and he was um, he was helping me with something in the room. And Aaron means lofty, exalted, high mountain. So I was with Aaron in this place and I had just graduated. I had my honor cord on. I was taking it off. And I still had my gown on. I was taking that off. 
and it was um, guys I had just I just graduated now we we've been a lot of people have been receiving dreams about graduation they've been hearing about it um, the year before this in 2015 I was at a stop sign and I saw um, I saw a um, high school student that was getting ready to graduate and they were going into one of the big arenas that's downtown Raleigh that can hold all of these people and um, I was stopped at a light waiting to go and they were stopped on a you know waiting to cross and so I just happened to notice them and the girl was in her cap and gown and she had a flower in one hand she had her parents with her and they were waiting to cross the street and I know they were going in to go um, get ready to get lined up for the graduation and I said to the Lord I said oh Lord someone's getting ready to graduate and he said and so are you daughter um, with honors and I was like, with honors. And then I had this dream with the honor cord a year later. I was like, you know, guys, Aaron means high and exalted lofty mountain. We know, we know the Lord has been pointing us to the mountains. He's been pointing us to certain things. Um, guys, I don't know how to express it any more than I, than I have. Please get your house in order. Please get your mind and your heart prepared, prepared, because I truly believe the first fruits are beginning ready to be called into service. Is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen tomorrow? Is it going to happen next week, next month even? You know, I don't know, but I know one thing, the Lord is pointing and telling us it's time it's time okay it's time it's it's time right now it's time so one other thing I want to talk to you all about um, I was praying to the Lord um, and just 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 trying to make sure my heart was clear because guys I don't just come out to the video and tell y'all Get your hearts clean. You know, just open it up, talk to the Lord, and just try to get it out. I have to do that myself. And I continue to do that as much as I possibly can. Because it's especially me right now, I have I I feel like I'm more out in the world right now trying to get my house figured out, trying to deal with all these different people, trying to get you know, all the contractors finally out of my house, trying to get things packed, trying to trying to declutter things, trying to toss things out, trying to get stuff in storage, you know, just, just whatever we can get done. It's taking a lot of time away from me and the Lord. I'm trying, um, I'm trying very hard to um, hear him a little bit more clearly. It's, it's been a struggle since September of last year. I can put it out there. That's the time that I know when all of things about hearing the Lord um, clearly it was like it was like a switch was turned off and then from that point forward you really had to start pressing in to hear what the Lord had to say now um, I, I have said that and I know that I have said that to several others that are hearing the Lord and they have confirmed the same time frame September of last year there was a change there was a change in the atmosphere trying to hear the Lord, trying to press in. And, you know, and, it, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's been very difficult because, you know, I work a full-time job. I handle a family. I've got a lot going on on my end. And I don't have time to sit in the Lord's presence all day long. Um, at lunch sometimes, I, in my car ride on the way to work, you know, on my walk in, on my lunch hour at work, you know, whenever I can and, and feel the urge to get into his presence, I try to do that. And so I went to the Lord and I've been talking to him, Father, tell me what's in here that I've not dealt with yet. Tell me what I need to take a look at, what I've what I have missed and what I have not seen. I need for you to to tell me, um, you know show it to me and this is what he said to me he said no more meat now 
when he said that to me, I knew he meant, I knew he meant physical food. I knew he meant physical food. Now, I need to preface that with, for the past year now, I've been led to get off of pork. I've not eaten bacon or in any pork product at all. I've, I've not been on a ham for your sandwiches, not any of it. I've, I've not done any of it. Um, it was, it was literally, I was not feeling good eating it at all. And I didn't realize how sick it was actually making me until I stopped eating it. And then one day, um, I sat down to have, um, s um, some, some cooked collards. And for you guys in the South, you know what that is. For you guys up North, you probably don't know what that is. It's like a, um, it's like a spinach, uh, a cooked spinach, uh, they call it collard greens, turnip greens, what have you, but it's, um, it's like a, it's like cooked spinach and, um, and they usually season it with ham or country ham or something like that. And so I went to have some collards and pulled out all the ham on it and just was going to eat the, the vegetable itself. But even the fact of it being seasoned and cooked with the pork made made me sick and I couldn't eat it anymore and so um and so I know that the Lord has been moving me in this direction for some time and then um so that was like for the past year but even before that the Lord has been you know trying to um take some things out of my life um he came to me one time in in prayer and Basically, I was I was doing um, studies on um, on the mikvah and um, the um, the Jewish um, requirement of immersion in water um, to, for cleansing for ritual cleansing and why and how that went about and um, you know and and everything that needed to be done to prepare yourself to get into that and I mean I was just doing some studies in that and that was about two years ago maybe two and a half years ago and the Lord really uh, impressed it upon me and 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 said these words to me daughter I need for you to get back to as close as to just the basics the natural state as you possibly can um, and so, um, even back then, I mean, I mentioned it, I mentioned it to a couple of my friends and I'm like, I, you know, I don't know where this came from, but I'm going with it, you know? And, um, and so, you know, I, I haven't worn fingernail polish, in, you know, at, since then. And I, I don't wear a lot of my jewelry and, you know, I don't wear a lot of eye makeup and that, you know, that, that kind of thing and, 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 and what have you anymore. I just don't, I mean, I've, I've put it down and, um, and I've tried to go back to as close to the basics as I can handle going, going back to the basics. I can even remember even before that, that I put my wedding band on. Um, I was getting ready to walk out the door and I put my, I had put my wedding band on. I guess I had taken it off to do dishes the night before, had it right up on the kitchen counter, put, you know, walking out, you know, rinsing out my coffee cup, put my wedding band on, was getting ready to head out the door. And when I put my wedding band on, this is what I heard. He said, that's not who you are anymore. And I said, yes, Lord, I, I know. In my mind, I was thinking spiritually, that's not who you are anymore. But truly what he meant was, you are, that is truly not who you are anymore. This is not who you are. That, you know, who you are is who you are to me and, and who you are in me. That's who you are. And he was bringing me through those levels of um, clearing things out of my life, setting me aside for a particular purpose, sanctifying my life in just small increments, you know, just, just small things, you know, um, because even before that, I mean, when I used to smoke cigarettes, you know, um, I was hearing from the Lord. I was talking with the Lord. I was, I, I was receiving dreams from the Lord. I was, you know, every, everything that I, you know, would share with you guys, you know, but the Lord, he, 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 
he laid it on my heart, but he gave me a choice. You know, daughter, put, you know, put those cigarettes down. Well, I struggled with it for almost a whole year trying to do it, you know, put it down. I'd put it down and pick it up. I'd put it down and pick it up, you know, or I'd put it down and I'd have two or three and then I'd put it down again. And, you know, you know, something crazy would happen. I'd pick it up again, you know, and what have you. And then I remember I picked it up one day and he just said to me, he said, daughter, now you need to make up your mind. He said, because, you know, if, if, if this is what your choice is going to be, then I, I, you know, there's something else that I, I need to do. And, um, and, you know, and I knew in my spirit at that time, he was giving me a choice and he was telling me, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't dogging me, you know, he, he was giving me the choice. If you put it down, then this is the work that I'm going to have for you to do. And if you don't put it down, then this is the work that I'm going to have for you to do. You know, can you do this? Are you able to do this? You know, and I knew if I put it down that I was going to be moving forward into something else. There was going to be something more that I could move forward into. And, 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 um, uh, what's the word and, um, grow into. And, um, and, and mature, that's the word, and mature to get into. And, um, and, and, um, and so I put him down from that day. When he had that conversation with me, I'm like, no, Lord, I choose you over this. I want the highest and best for my life. Whatever your highest purpose is for my life, that's where I want to go. But guys, he had a purpose no matter which way I would have chose. He still had a purpose for my life. I knew it. I knew it in my heart. He still had a purpose for my life. It wouldn't have been the highest and best, but it would have been a good purpose for my life. You know? So, um, so you know, he, he still gave me that choice. He gives us choices about things. And so I just wanted to bring all of that to you. I just wanted you guys just to just to know and understand the Lord is the Lord now is basically saying, no more meat. Now, I, I know that the Bible says, you know, um, I know that the Bible says, um, you know, you can eat meat with the cloven hoof and ones that chew their cud and, you know, or, or what have you. There's, there's all kinds of things where we're allowed to eat certain meats. And, um, and, um, but this, this doesn't have anything to do with what we're allowed to eat. He's telling me, he's, he's, I went to him and said, Lord, what have I missed? What is it that I need to address? What, what else can I do for you? What can I, what help me, tell me? I, I wanted him to tell me and he did. And he said, no more meat. And I, I said, okay, Lord. Well, first I said, Lord, is that you? <laughs> so, you know, I wasn't even sure. I was like, What? And, um, you know, I was expecting the Lord to tell me something about sin, something that I had done, something, you know, because I'm so used to doing, you know, stupid stuff. You know, I have to repent. I have to say, Lord, please forgive me, you know, and what have you. But this was, you know, no more meat. And I thought, okay. So I went to him and I said, well, Lord, um, I said, um, uh, can, you know, can you, can you give me confirmation that I'm hearing this is from you? And, um, and he said, yes, I'll give you confirmation. And I said, okay, well, what do I do up until that point? He said, well, just wait for the confirmation. And um, I said, okay. And so um, um, I thought about it. I thought about it. I, I didn't get confirmation that day. I didn't get confirmation that evening. And I thought, well, you know, uh, you know, I went looking online for some things. I mentioned something to a friend of mine earlier that day. And you know, you know, she was mentioning some things and I thought, well, you know, is this my confirmation? And I thought, mm, no, I don't, I don't think so. You know, and I just, so the next, you know, that night I, I, I laid down and I was in prayer and I'm like, Lord, you know, um, I know I've prayed to you about this. I've asked you about this. She said, you know, wait on the confirmation. I said, oh, I'm going to wait on the confirmation. I said, but you know, it helped me to understand this Lord, you know, what it, 
what is this about? What are we, you know, what's going on? And I really didn't hear a whole lot from him. And I thought, well, all right, so I'm going to sit quiet. And, um, and so then, um, the next morning I got up and, um, I just had it in my mind. I was just going to go ahead and move forward with it. I was going to go ahead and just remove meat from the diet and, um, and I didn't need his confirmation because I know for a fact that anything he has ever told me has been for my good. It has been for my protection. And he was talking to me about something I had asked him. So now this was um, a day or two before the first of Nisan, before the Jewish New Year. So um, maybe the day before, but I know of officially um, the first of Nisan, um, I have not had meat uh, in, in my diet at all. And what is really, really interesting is, is that um, um, I, I have not missed it at all. I have not missed it at all. And so, um, and so, um, I had, I just went ahead and moved forward with it. And I'm, I, I, I prayed that very next day and I said, Lord, you know, if you, um, if you want to give me confirmation, wonderful, but I'm moving forward without it. I trust you. I, 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 going to move forward with this. I don't need your confirmation. I know you always have, um, my, my good, my, um, you have my, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm so tired, guys. You have my, um, you watch over me in all things, and you want my good at all times. And so um, I, I just, I'm not going to question you on it. I'm just going to move forward. Um, you always guide me, and you always lead me, and it's always for my good. And um, and so I did. And so um I don't know what it was a day or two later. Um, maybe I had a, I had a dear sister, Heather. She sent me a video and, um, I don't, I don't watch a whole lot of videos unless, um, unless the Lord just kind of tells me to go ahead and listen to it. But she sent me a video through messenger chat and, um, and I will share this video, uh, as, as along with all of these messages too, if I can find them all. Um, on uh, on the um, comment section, but she sent me a video of John the Baptist from Tribulation Now Radio, and it was with Diane Pullum as as the guest. And um, and when I started listening to um, Diane speak, I was flabbergasted because she a lot of the things that she was saying was confirming a lot of the messages from the past. I mean, things that she had, that she said, I, I just sat and listened. It was like I was hearing messages being spoken to me that I have already heard, but I hadn't heard them before, you know, because they were, they were what the Lord told her, but they, they were confirming everything that the Lord had said to me. And I was just like, man, this is just, this is so awesome. And I just needed to listen. But then she went in and she said, there are a few of us. Um, she said that the message was not for the many. It was for the few. And she was going in and describing um, what few she was speaking of and what the Lord was conveying to her. And that it was there were certain certain ones of us that were going to be needing to remove things out of our lives so that we could hear him clear her, clearer to be able to be the mouthpiece and speak forth the things that the Lord was needing us to do. And I just said I, that was it. I knew that's what it was. I know that's why the Lord was removing meat from my diet, removing things out of my body so that I can remain clear and free flowing for him. Um, and, and I knew, I knew instantly the minute, I, in the minute it came out of her mouth, I knew that was the confirmation that the Lord had sent me regarding uh, no more meat. So guys, I just wanted to bring that to you and I want you all to go to the Lord about it. There may be some of you already that the Lord has been asking to put some things down. Um, maybe the Lord has told you specifically what it was for or for me, he kind of stayed quiet and, and, and made me wait on the confirmation that I asked for. But guys, if he tells you to do something, go ahead and do it. 
you know, we can ask for confirmations. We can wait upon the Lord and wait for something to come forward. But guys, when all of the calamities and the turbulence hit, when all of that stuff hits, we're not going to have time. We're not going to have time for confirmations. We're going to have to be able to hear from the Lord, hear what he's saying to us, and move upon that. We're going to have to trust and move upon that. And um, and so, guys, I just wanted to come to you and tell you about that. Um, that I'm, I'm still digging into um, some information now because, you know, basically I feel like, well, you know, I'm still looking to see what the angels were, uh, the stars on the crown, and the, that we know that they're angels um, over the Queensland area. I'm kind of at a dead dead end on that. Although digging into some stuff in Revelation, I'm getting a little bit more about what um, those might possibly be. Um, but I'm still digging into it, so I can't really go into too much in, into that. But now also, too about, well, what was the diet then uh, for Adam and Eve back in the Garden of Eden? And, and, and it, you know, is, is he going to be bringing us to that level? And what is the reason other than being able to hear him clearly and being able to get, get closer, um, closer to him? You know, is there other reasons that we're not aware of? Is it a sanctification and consecration to, to another level, you know, is this something that um, that the Lord is asking others to do? You know, what's going on with this? And so there's there's been a lot going on on my end, and um, I just wanted to say um, I've I've read several messages where people have been praying for me, and guys, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for your prayers, because. Uh, it means an awful lot to me. It really does. Um, I can feel people's prayers. And I know that doesn't sound, it doesn't sound right. But when you're sick or when you're down low or when you're dealing with something, um, I, I know prayer works. And I can feel the prayers of people. Um, I can feel heaviness lift. I can feel pain go away. I remember I woke up in the middle of the night. It was like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I went straight to Facebook. And I just typed out a note. Guys, please pray for me. I was dealing with some type of an attack. Jaw pain. Uh, tooth, I don't know what it was. It was not a tooth, but it was jaw, neck, something pain. And it was just so intense in the middle of the night. And I just went on and I typed in, please, I need prayer. And within 45 minutes, my pain was gone. And people jumped and they got right on there and they started praying. Probably 20 people at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Guys, I'm telling you, prayer works. And I just wanted to say thank you all so much for keeping me in your thoughts and your prayers. Um, I appreciate it greatly. I really do. It It is no small thing to me. It's a huge thing. And I, and I, I appreciate it so very much. So guys, I just wanted to come to you and just try and catch you up on what all's going on. I don't have any um, major studies going on other than just trying to dig into what the Lord has been leading me and guiding me in at this time. Please go to the Lord in prayer about it. I reached out to another sister that I am aware that the Lord has asked her to do um, this in her in her life as well. And, um, and I am so very interested in being able to speak with her about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm awaiting a response and a reply to that now. So guys, just keep, keep everybody in prayer. Be excited. This is, guys, this is the season. This is the season. 
Is this the year the Lord's going to call us home during this season? I pray that it is. It certainly does seem to be pointing that way in all of these messages. And, um, and you know, the most exciting one I can recall is the one back in 2014. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Guys, <laughs> this is such an exciting time to be alive. Um, you were chosen for such a time as this. We have great we have a great job to do and such a gracious opportunity to be involved in something is to this magnitude is just phenomenal. So guys, I look forward to meeting each and every one of you face to face. I feel that it's coming very soon. Um, I just would like to say God bless you. I love you all and take care.